You talk about the cosmists, the terrans, the so and the cyborgs. What are these human groups and what are their priorities and their ideological arguments? Imagine 2020s, 2030s, certainly 2040s, then this whole issue of species dominance will be very much in the air. Uh, it, it'll just be part of any educated person's general knowledge. Right? Like if you go back five years from now, now being 2010, uh, if you ask people about global warming, climate change, you know, that, they'd have to scratch their heads. I mean, only a small number of people would, would have been familiar with the issue. But today, you, know, you, you can't avoid it. Right? I mean, just the media is so full of it. So, so any educated person knows about these things. Well, I'm guessing within five years from now, uh, uh, a similar phenomenon will have occurred on the issue of species dominance because uh, the, the media around the world, at least in the English speaking countries, is really starting to bite on, on this issue. Right? So imagine then millions, probably billions of people with their own home robots and they're talking to their machines and so on and then they're noticing that the intelligence of these machines keeps increasing year by year. So then the politics will start. Right? Pe people will start taking, th th they'll, they'll no longer consider this question of you know, should human beings become number two species on the planet. That will no longer be a science fiction type question. It will become more and more real. Right? Because people will see with their own eyes that their own machines, that their household machines, uh, are getting smarter and smarter every year. So once people ta start taking it seriously, and millions of people, then you'll start getting the politics occurring. So what political groups is it, will, will, you know, can we expect? So I'll, I need to introduce some labels now. So those people in favour of building these godlike creatures, these artilects, I, I call them cosmists. So the ideology in favour of building artefacts is cosmism, and, you know, as an ism. Right? And why that word? Why, you know, it's so obviously based on the word cosmos. Well, it's the big picture, right? I mean, there are the whole series of arguments that the cosmists will use in, in favour of pushing cosmism. And one of, one of them, of course, is, well, there's the whole universe out there, right? There's a cosmos. And if humanity do, decides to, to build these artefacts, then very likely the, 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 the domain of the artefacts will be the cosmos. Right? I mean, there's a huge, huge cosmos out there. Why, why should the artefacts remain on, on our tiny little speck of a planet, um, in one tiny little speck of a solar system, which is in just one galaxy of billions that we know of, and for all we know, there may be you know, other, other universes in the, in the multiverse. So you know, the, the big picture says that it's highly unlikely that the artefacts will simply decide to stay on the Earth. So, okay, now the other group uh, are opposed to huma hum humanity building these artefacts. And their primary motive will be fear. I mean, think about it. I mean, I'll, make, I'll make an analogy. Uh, well, I'm every time I bang my hand on the, on this table, I'm probably killing a lot of bacteria, right? Probably. But as a human being, I don't care. Right? These these bacteria are so so inferior, so insignificant relative to me as a human being with my what hundred trillion cells, right? Bacteria, one cell. I don't care. They're just nothing to me, insignificant. So by analogy, if humanity builds these artefacts and these artefacts take a sufficiently advanced form, you know, trillions or trillions or whatever, times uh, superior capacities compared to human beings, human brains, then who's to say that these machines, these artefacts, one day may can look on humanity as, as a kind of pest? Consider us so inferior that we're just not worth bothering with. Right? 
And, and maybe the, the archilects may decide to do something and simply not take our human interests into consideration. For example, they, they may decide, well, let's get rid of the oxygen because you know, it only rusts our electronic components or something. And, and of course, without oxygen, we can't live, so we get wiped out. So the, the Terrans, now, that's based on the word terra, the earth, because that's their focus of attention. To, to Terrans, their primary objective is the survival of the human species. Right? That's unquestionable for them. It's number one, top, top priority. And in the limit, when, when push really comes to shove, the Terrans will be prepared to go to war and to literally exterminate the cosmists for the sake of the survival of the human species. Billions of people. Better? The lesser evil is to wipe out a few million cosmists for the sake of the preservation, the survival of the billions of human beings. Right? This, this is what's at stake. This is, this is the issue that's coming this century. So now there's a third group. Uh, a lot of people say, well, this issue, this, this future confrontation, this ideological bitter dispute between the cosmists and the Terrans could be potentially avoided you can just simply go around the issue, avoid it, by how? Well, um, like this. Right? You become, human beings become a cyborg. Cyborg, that's cybernetic organism. In other words, part machine, part human. Right? Cyborg. So the cyborgists, cyborgism, is a philosophy to have human beings themselves become artilects, godlike. Right? So, so bit by bit, and the pun, the pun is deliberate, <laughs> right? you're increasing your human, well, you're increasing your brain capacity, your, your, your artificial intelligence, by simply adding components to your own brain. So that, that's a third group. Now, from the point of view so now, now let's start talking a bit about the relationships, uh, the ideological disputes between these three parties. So I'll start, I'll start with the Terrans. From the point of view of a Terran, there's almost no difference between a pure artilect, you know, a pure machine, and a cyborg. So part machine, part human. Why do I say that? Because if you... To, Put it graphically. Im imagine I have here a single grain of sugar. Now, if you do the physics, the math, there's potentially more computing capacity in that single grain of sugar compared to the human brain by a factor of, I don't know, billions, trillions. It's vastly superior to, to what our human brain can do. Just a tiny little grain of sugar. Okay? So imagine some, I don't know, into the, into the second half of the 21st century. Imagine some young mother just given birth to her baby and the technology is there. She needs to make a choice. Will she convert her baby into a cyborg? So will she add the grain of sugar to the baby's brain? So imagine she decides to do that. Now, remember the capacity, the computing capacity of that grain of sugar is so vastly superior to the human brain that once that grain of sugar, in a sense, integrates into the baby's brain circuitry, that baby's brain is effectively an artifact, right? Because 99.9999999999 percent of its brain capacity is artillectual and only 0.00001% is baby, is, is human. Okay? So effectively that mother has killed her baby in the sense 
that it's no longer human. Right? She has made, she has converted that baby into an artelic. Now, it, in, in, in human disguise, I mean, it still looks like a baby, right? All you've done is just add this tiny you know, grain of sugar to the baby's brain. But the computing capacity is so vast, so enormous, so superior to, to, to what the human baby's brain can do that effectively it's not human. It's an intellect and totally alien. Right? So as that mother tries to communicate with her child, if that's the right word, impossible. I mean, why, why would that baby, that baby artelect, find communicating with a human being who thinks a million times more slowly, has a memory capacity a zillion, 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 zillion times less? Why, why would it bother? I mean, it, it'd be like a human being trying to communicate with a rock. I mean, a, a rock can communicate. You know, it can decay over millions of years, right? It can change its state very, very, very slowly. So it's just, it's just not interesting. Or, or to make another analogy, oh. so same sort of time frame in, in that period, so the second half of the century, this century, 21st century. Imagine you are an older parent. You have adult children. And you are Terran. You, you've seen all sorts of horrors around you, and, and you're just petrified and fearful of, of where society is going. Like humanity is being destroyed all around you. Right? There's cyborgs left and right at all kinds of different phases of development and, right? and totally, utterly alien to you. So you're, you're feeling, as, as Terran, more and more fearful and anxious. And then you hear the decision from your own children that they have decided to become cyborgs. So they, they want to upgrade themselves. So they... And, well, now they're artelics, effectively. I mean, they're cyborgs, but in terms of capacity, they're effectively artelics. So these Terran parents, older parents, will feel they have lost their children. So you, you can imagine the strength of the emotions that they'll, they'll be feeling. They've lost their kids. I can't communicate with them anymore. So, as, as, as cyborgism rises and rises, then the, the Terrans will just feel... They'll, they'll be deeply afraid. What, what's going to happen to them? As, as these cyborgs and artelecs increase their intelligence levels, what, what will happen to human beings? I mean, these Terrans, they're not stupid. They, they know, they, they can read the science, they, they, they can read the big numbers, they, they know that these artilects could become vastly superior to us. And then, and then the, you know, the risk argument, maybe one day they'll do this to human beings. So you can anticipate then that the Terrans will form political parties. Okay? They will organise. They, they, they will not keep to themselves. They, they will collectively organize. And the fear factor will rise. It, it'll be like McCarthyism in the middle 20th century.